On this episode of Narcissist Apocalypse Q&A, we discuss the short-term and long-term effects of emotional abuse. Welcome to Narcissist Apocalypse, everyone. I am Brandon Chadwick, and today we are going to discuss the short-term and long-term effects of emotional abuse. But before we get to that, if you want to be a guest on our Survivor Story show... Uh, please do go to our website at NarcissistApocalypse.com. Top of the page, there's a button that says Guest Form. When you click on that button, it takes you to our Guest Form page. There you can read all of our instructions. Please do read all of our instructions. And either send us an email at NarcissistApocalypse at gmail.com or fill out our Guest Form and press the Submit button. And please do read all of the instructions and send it in the format that we ask for. So we have a trigger warning for this episode. This episode might not be for you. We discuss suicidal ideation in this episode. We discuss sexual coercion in this episode. And we also discuss physical abuse in this episode as well. So that is our trigger warning. And if this isn't for you, please turn this episode off now. And today we are going to discuss the short-term and long-term effects of emotional abuse. There's a lot of people out there that are experiencing these effects and might be currently in a relationship and not be able to recognize that these are being manifested because of the emotional abuse. And we're just going to go through a big rundown of all of this today from being in a relationship to also being a child as well in, in these situations when there's abuse going on in the home and how these things can manifest and to recognize that these things are happening. So when it comes to emotional abuse, the domestic violence hotline uh, uses this definition. Emotional abuse is when someone uses non-physical tactics to control or manipulate a person or to intentionally damage their self-esteem and self-worth. Uh, these tactics are meant to scare, isolate, and frighten the person on the receiving end. And someone might employ these emotional abuse tactics to chip away at your sense of reality and it can take many different forms, and this can cause you to feel wounded, worthless, and anxious all the time. So we're now just going to go through, uh, in romantic relationships, how emotional abuse can appear. And this first list of romantic relationships can have crossover with the parent-child relationship, but we will be going to a specific child one uh, right after this list. So some things on our list are humiliating you in public, uh, berating or insulting you. There could be verbal threats going on. Uh, there's some constant monitoring or possessiveness that's going on. We hear that a lot in, in the show. Intimidation tactics can be used. Gaslighting is right up there, especially in the crazy making kind of things to question your reality. Uh, dismissiveness, you can throw in there, you know, the silent treatment. Uh, withholding affection, uh, minimization uh, of of your feelings, really cruel name calling, uh, put downs, and uh, threatening to harm your partner. You know, intimidation tactics. You also might have your request being disregarded, your needs not being uh, respected, unnecessary arguments, critical comments uh, about your appearance. Uh, it could be a very very big thing. And your partner may have very, very uh, unpredictable uh, moods and really make these very unreasonable demands. We hear a lot of uh, moving goalposts uh, in our show where a demand will be made and you meet that demand and then it just gets changed to something even further and bigger down the road. It's just an unreasonable expectation that can never be filled. And when it comes to child uh, emotional abuse that really affects a, a child's development of their self-esteem. Uh, parents, uh, it, for these children, the, the abusers in this situation, will usually engage in constantly criticizing uh, the child, threatening the child, and that can be with physical violence, but also abandonment. We hear that a lot on the show, that there's a lot of abandonment issues that are created. 
Uh, also here we have withholding love or affection. Now, making the child witness domestic violence is a form of emotional abuse as well. Uh, ridiculing, shaming, humiliating the child, uh, just putting the child in a dangerous situation, uh, being in chaos is a form of emotional abuse, and also to encourage the child to participate in dangerous behavior, inappropriate behavior, uh, that all falls under this category of emotional abuse. So emotional abuse can have effects on your mental and physical health, whether you are in a romantic relationship with an abuser or you were raised by one, and you can have long and short-term effects. So let's start off with the short-term effects. So the first one on our list is isolation and loneliness. This is a short-term effect. It can also be a long-term effect. Uh, Number two as a short-term effect of emotional abuse is self-doubt. And in the early stages of uh, gaslighting that can happen, even on the first event uh, of being gaslit, where your uh, memory might be questioned, that can be like the beginning of self-doubt right there. Uh, Shame can also happen uh, very early on. That would be number three uh, on our list here. Shame can happen very early on. And you might have told them something about yourself that was a vulnerable thing and that can be thrown right back into your face. Uh, Number four on our list as a short-term effect is confusion. And confusion, you know, can mix in there with a little bit of self-doubt in the sense of uh, with gaslighting, you know, things really can start to become confusing. If you're involved in circular conversations, that is a short-term effect. It's very confusing after one of those conversations, and that can be like a one-time thing, and boom, it happens. Uh, Low self-esteem, this can also be a short-term effect. And that's uh, nitpicking can can go on. That's an easy one to kind of think of of how uh, low self esteem can uh, be created. A uh, number six on our list as a short term effect is fear when interacting with others. And if you are dating someone and they are someone who's jealous and they might be a little bit of a rager, if you see that once after you start to interact maybe with your friends on certain occasions, you then may instantly have a fear of interacting with other people, especially if they're jealous. Um, you know, that's just going to really put you, you're not going to want to be put into that situation again. And that's a real, a short-term effect that can happen pretty quickly. Number seven on this list of short-term effects of emotional abuse can be anxiety or fear and hypervigilance, uh, can be a part of this one as well. And all it takes is really one, uh, big incident where there's rage involved, uh, intimidation can be involved, and you will be really hypervigilant about, you know, moods that might be going on in the room. You don't want to set someone off. You don't want to set the abuser off. So that's a short-term effect that can happen very, very quickly. Uh, Number eight on our list is aggression, and you're probably thinking to yourself, why aggression? And we hear in a lot of stories that there's something called defensive abuse. So if you are being defensive to abuse that is happening toward you, you might be aggressive in response to that, and that is a short-term effect of emotional abuse. Uh, Number nine on our list is the kind of the opposite of that, which is becoming overly passive or compliant. And we had an episode recently, which was on people pleasing and and fawning. And uh, once again, when it comes to someone who's a rager and someone who's always causing a problem and they're really kind of dominating and intimidating in, in their, in their abusive way, you might be someone who doesn't want any uh, problems and you just want peace to happen and you start to become passive and compliant out of uh, fear uh, of what is going on. And that is number nine on our list. 
And number 10 on the list is uh, feeling like you're walking on eggshells and making yourself small to fit the room and to fit the, the household or to fit the relationship. You know, if you're making yourself small and as small as possible, and that's just the, not just your physical space, but your voice as well, that is a short-term effect of emotional abuse because someone else is taking up all of that space and you are still living in it, but you're making yourself, you know, as quiet as possible in a way that you're able to uh, cope with what is going on and that the other person might not get on your case. You're really making yourself fit into this box and because that person doesn't mind that box that you're in. But at the same time, you're not being uh, your authentic uh, version of you because you're, you're doing it out of fear. Another short-term uh, effect, number 11 on our list, is feeling undesirable. And when your abuser is constantly telling you uh, terrible things about you and putting you down, they might be attacking the way you look, uh, your competency, they could attack anything about you, your worth, to make you feel that you are an undesirable person. We also hear... You know, a lot of times when someone is a single mom with a, uh, some kids, you know, they might attack that to make them feel like they're undesirable. And that is also a short term effect. And this can happen after one instance that you can feel undesirable. And number 12 on our list is the feeling that you are not good enough. And that is also can be a very short term uh, effect something pretty quickly can happen where they really can um, really poke at your uh, competency to make you like you're to make you feel like you you are not good enough. That's a really quick and easy one to have a put down in, in that way. Or an abuser can make you feel like you've done something wrong and then what you're doing and it might be like helping out around the house and that the way you're doing things is wrong if they can really get you to think that what you're doing is is wrong in a long term this can happen to not feel good enough but they can also make you feel wrong in 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 one instance to make you feel like you're not good enough either and then also a short-term effect, and the last one we have on our list for short-term effects of emotional abuse is disassociation. And this can be a short-term one. It could also be a long-term one. A lot of these can be short and long, but this one, disassociation, uh, you know, when it comes to, if you've heard a lot of the episodes that we've done, there's a lot of sexual coercion that goes on and disassociation happens a lot during uh, those times disassociation that happens in literally a second it's a very short term effect but it has long lasting effects uh, as well so when it comes to the long term effects of emotional abuse you might recognize some of these things that might be going on with you number 1 on our list is just mental health conditions number 2 you might have a long term effect of negative emotions like anger uh, you might have long-term uh, chronic stress. You might have some physical health challenges that have kind of showed itself over this time. Body aches, heart palpitations that are just kind of continuing. You know, the stress of everything has really taken its toll. Hypervigilance has taken its toll I internally on you. You know, attachment styles might have changed during this process and the long-term effects. Uh, when you're a child... You might become an anxious attachment uh, person. You might become an avoidant attachment a per, a type of person, or that could be uh, combined. You could be an anxious avoidant. Codependency might be created at this time as well when you're a child. And, and when you're an adult, these attachment styles can be manipulated and happen in the relationship. And we hear a lot when someone is withholding or they are using the silent treatment on someone that it creates this addiction and attachment to the person where they start moving over a boundary line because that anxious attachment has been created. It's like a, a drug addiction of sort. We, we talk about that a lot on the show. Someone might be experiencing apathy where there's just like a lack of interest or enthusiasm about anything. Uh, depression can happen. A low self-esteem and self-worth over a long period of time can be created. It can be a short-term thing, but it can also be a long-term thing. Sleep disturbances can be a long-term effect. Suicidal ideation 
is is an effect we've heard it a lot on the show that people um have these thoughts creep into their mind and even do have attempts at suicide from the long-term uh, exposure of being a child, but also in relationships as well. Extreme dependence on the abuser it can also be a long-term uh, effect. And we did cover this uh, in an earlier episode when it comes to you know the creation of dependency and how... An abuser, when they're specifically using coercive control and to isolate you, they want to be this kind of truth teller and have the whole entire world center around them. So all of the information that comes from them is the truth and everyone else is a lie. So you really start to depend on them. And over time, they might in that, specifically in the coercive control, you know, they might take control of everything where you also just feel like you can't do anything. So you're depending on them and you kind of, in your mind, in, in the difficulty of leaving, it becomes more difficult because you think you can't live without them and you can't survive without them. And that's a big thing, uh, a trick that they pull on you. Um, and this can happen in a relationship and, and it also obviously happens in, in childhood as well. And next on the list is the inability to trust. And that's just not the inability to trust others. It's the inability to uh, trust yourself. And we also talk about this a lot on the show. When you're um, constantly in gaslighting or you're told all these negative things uh, about yourself and about the other people around you, uh, you start to question your own uh, judgment of your feelings because they could have been minimized in, in situations and, you know, it just creates this whole entire inability to trust what you're thinking and who you are as a person because they're really doing their best to erode your identity. And it's a, it's a long-term effect. And we hear a lot on the show that people are just specifically when they're in a child trying to figure out who they are as an adult. They might not even know what their likes are anymore. And then also in a relationship, the erosion of who they are. Uh, you hear so many times that at a certain point in the relationship, they don't know who they are anymore. All of what they're doing has kind of changed. Everything has shifted in a way that the person that they were at the beginning and maybe they had boundaries and all these things have just slowly been eroded away. Their self-esteem has been eroded away. Everything about them has been eroded because the focus has been on the abuser the whole time and to stay as safe as possible. And sometimes when you're trying to be as safe as possible, you start losing the autonomy of of who you are and you stop being able to uh, trust yourself in, in any sort of way. So that is the inability to trust. Uh, next on our list, we have uh, loneliness becomes a long-term uh, effect. You know, specifically when you're a child and you have no one to understand you or you feel like you're completely alone, that no one is even listening to you, it can create a long-term effect of, of, of being lonely. And it can also, in relationship, this can also happen as well, specifically if you are isolated and cut off from support. You know, that's a big thing is, is feeling lonely and that no one out there uh, cares for you uh, at all. And then also within the home, the person that you're trusting the most to care for you isn't doing that as well. And it creates a sense of loneliness. And uh, next up on our list, we have substance abuse, and that's, I think, pretty much self-explanatory that that can be created as a way to cope uh, with what you are going through or what you have gone through uh, when it comes to a long-term effect of emotional abuse. So next up on our list, we have a fear of abandonment as a long-term uh, effect, and if you were young and you experienced uh, a manipulation tactic where there was emotional distance going on, and this can also happen in uh, your relationships as well, previous relationships, you might get very stressed and it can be considered, the stress can be considered abandonment anxiety in your relationships. And you might be considered clingy. You know, that fear of abandonment might label you as someone who is clingy. And that's often rooted in just a fear of losing you know, the people around your support system because the relationships that you previously had and, and possibly as well growing up have kind of conditioned you to um, get the stress level because all you are used to is these manipulation tactics uh, to create this stress. And that can be the silent treatment, withholding affection, 
and, and neglect as a whole. Another long-term uh, effect is related to your identity and the erosion of your identity. It's because you might have become a people pleaser and you might have a difficulty being authentic. And you could have taken a lot of criticism growing up. Uh, someone could have been picking you apart like limb by limb and you might have eternal internalized a lot of what has gone on and that makes it difficult for you to open up and be yourself and you might start putting yourself into different types of boxes to conform to what you think someone else wants and needs and you're not being your authentic self and you're not being who you truly are um, because you're afraid that someone might not accept you. So you're keeping this emotional distance within these relationships. And it's not fair to yourself. It's not fair uh, to your partner. Uh, but it's created from you know your childhood and in previous relationships a- as well. Um, because you're taking such criticism uh, of what was going on. It's very hard to be vulnerable to, to someone else in the aftermath of that because all you know is that who you were trying to be and who you wanted to be was constantly attacked. And, you know, that can show up in an inauthentic way of, you know, a facade of who you are and not in a... Um, you know, terrible human type of facade. It's just that you're you're afraid that um, you you will be rejected. And uh, next up on our list is low self esteem, and this can consist of constant put downs, nitpicking, uh, and these things can really wear you down. This can lead to feelings of worthlessness, and you might start feeling like you're just a less deserving. Uh, person or you're not as valid as as everyone else that is around you. Uh, also in these relationships, a long-term effect is self-doubt. And we've discussed before, you know, gaslighting, this can really make you question your own thoughts, your abilities, your perception of reality. And if you are continuously gaslit, you will start to lose confidence in yourself and con- confidence in your gut and your instincts and you know you start you might start to question yourself more and that can learn uh, that can lead to a long-term effect of self-sabotage and then once that starts happening it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a lot of ways after that and then you'll really have a, a more difficult time identifying and, and trusting your own feelings uh, next up on our list is shame and shame is a big one and it's a long-term effect, and it involves, you know, behaviors that were made to make you feel ashamed uh, of the parts of who you are, and that could be your likes and dislikes and, and, you know, what you want in the future, and this also feeds back into the difficulty of being authentic, and this can cause you to stifle parts of who you are, your identity, uh, because you just want to avoid feeling uh, the shame that's associated with it. And up next, we have Stockholm Syndrome. And that is when you are so terrified of the abuser that you then start to identify uh, with them and you become bonded with the abuser as a way to stop the abuse that is going on. And you might even start defending uh, the abuser and all of their uh, abusive actions. And that can also be a very long-term effect of uh, emotional abuse. Up next on our list, we have social anxiety, and social anxiety is uh, an offshoot to a lot of these other things that we've mentioned. And this happens when there's a lot of shame and inadequacy uh, feelings going on. Self-criticism might be happening, and it starts to make you be really fearful of interacting with other people. And up next, we have eating disorders can be a long-term uh, effect as well. And if you grew up in a home with someone who is uh, vain or really into appearances, your family's really into appearances of how you're looking, and they're trying to, con- and they're very controlling. They like to control maybe even what you eat and everything about you. There's no autonomy going on, and this can also happen in relationships as well with nitpicking involved in all this uh, too. 
and that can help create uh, eating disorders uh, as a long-term uh, effect as well. And the last thing we have on our list for the long-term effects is PTSD, uh, CPTSD. So you don't always have to have physical abuse happen to get PTSD or CPTSD. And under the emotional abuse uh, umbrella, the biggest thing that we think of uh, when it comes to the contribution of PTSD is, is verbal abuse. It's a big one when it comes to the emotional abuse factors. But there are other ones as well. Uh, other things that can happen are hearing or seeing your partner uh, threaten you uh, or your children uh, or anyone really, parents, siblings, close friend. Um, they might take important documentation of yours and they could hide it from you. And that can include your driver's license, your health insurance cards, birth certificate, anything that makes it very difficult for you to establish your identity or receive any type of service. Any experience you know, where there's any pervasive pattern of brainwashing or crazy making, any type of course of control that manipulates uh, your thinking, emotions, or beliefs uh, is part of, uh, can, can cause PTSD. Uh, Re-traumatization, so the abuser reminds you of negative things that happen in your past, and that could be sexual assaults, uh, accidents, miscarriages, etc. And this is done in a very manipulative way and it's not done in a loving way and can also contribute to PTSD. And, you know, the symptoms of PTSD, uh, there's jumpiness, uh, nervousness, worry, fear, pervasive anxiety that makes you avoid doing like very common activities, driving, you know, sometimes eating as well, uh, trouble sleeping, uh, or you're waking up uh, throughout the evening, uh, nightmares. Uh, you know, we've mentioned depression earlier. Depression can be part of PTSD as a symptom as well. Uh, just also feeling unable to trust anyone and that the, you know, in, in the thought process that the world is a bad place and it's a very, very scary place to, to live in. So that is it for today's episode on the short-term and long-term effects of emotional abuse. And we went over some symptoms as well. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it uh, helpful. And if you want to be a guest on our Survivor Story episodes, please do go to our website at NarcissistApocalypse.com. Top of the page, there's a button that says Guest Form. When you click on that button, it takes you to our Guest Form page. There you can read all of our instructions and either send us an email at NarcissistApocalypse at gmail.com or fill out our guest form and press the submit button. And please do read all of our instructions and send it in the format that we ask for. And also at our website, we have our very own support group. So if at the top of the page of our website, you click on it, it says support group. There it takes you to our very own safe social network where we have Zoom meetings every Wednesday night, every Thursday afternoon, and every Saturday night. Also there we have forum boards for you to post on and get the validation that you need. You can share your experience. You can also help others and validate their experience as well. It's a great group of people on there at NarcissistApocalypse.com support group. Click that button today to get support. And if you need even more support, please do visit our friends at DomesticShelters.org. At DomesticShelters.org, they have articles and resources to help you make sense of what you are dealing with. And it is a great website because they also have every website address, every phone number, every email address for agencies and shelters, no matter how big or small the town you are in. DomesticShelters.org has it all. So please do visit them today. It's a free resource and a great organization. And that is it for today's show. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good night.